Right, let's address the big question. The thing that everybody's talking about at the moment. How we're all one. And how you have to get rid of anything that isn't you. Well, that depends on what you mean by you, doesn't it? Alright? So, yes, your name, your physical appearance, those things aren't you. They may be, they may reflect part of you, but probably your name doesn't, or it might do if your parents were channeling, channeling what you were telling them, it happens. But you, like you, the me, when you say me, you know, that's very important that you are, that you feel you are significant. Why shouldn't we all feel significant? And there are lots of people at the moment who just say, well, yeah, you feel significant because, you know, you're part of the all, all one. Like, well, we're all one, and just, you know, get rid of all any sort of traces of what you think might be unique to you. But to me, that's giving away your only true possession. You see, when I say stuff on videos, and I probably should remind people more, I haven't... If I've read it in a book, I'll say i read it in this book. But what most of what I know comes from having gone through the thoughts, the scenarios in my head. Like, I'll take on a new truth and I'll perceive the universe in a different way using that truth and I'll act in accordance with that truth. And it, if it if it isn't a truth, it will show up that it isn't a truth. It will it will fall apart. So when I say I know something, you know I know it from experience. So let's say I say I know that you cannot travel back in time, not fully. You can't go back and change anything, and you can't go forwards into time and witness an event not fully. You may be able to get a glimpse of something that might happen in the future and you can obviously remember the past, you can share somebody else's memory of the past but you know those you cannot time travel. Now so you know anything that comes up about time travel and as they try and sort of twist it and sort of say how it might be possible and multiple uh, parallel universes or whatever you might want to include to try and make it possible is just not happening you know this this is see if I've allowed my reality to include that possibility you know I'm I'm not settled I'm not balanced it's not right so in a sense, that's part of the truth guide as well. You know, you take on a truth, you let it becomes part of what you perceive as reality. It gives you a certain sense of stability or not stability. And when it gives you stability, a truth that you've taken on, if it gives you stability, it's true, right? And we're talking about the fundamental truths here, not just like, uh, did my neighbour sort of say something nasty to me the other day? You know, stuff like that, right? So the big fundamental truth about our reality. And so regarding the, you know, are we all part of the one and or everything like that? When I, I, I've obviously, I've been going into meditation for a number of years and I actually have experienced being me without any of the trappings of this physical body or my name, anything, if you like, that's been added to me. I went 
into my only possession, my core, my heart, my awareness, right? Now, this is the deepest state of meditation I've probably been in. It's not the best. I've been as deep, and I'll explain in a minute. But getting there was really, really scary. And I also had to ignore uh, interruptions. Phone was ringing. Other phone was getting texts and alerts. It was everything was like it really didn't want me to do this. But it felt like the enemy didn't want me to do this. So that actually gave me encouragement. My heart was beating like mad. But I found myself in a place where the only thing I had was, if you like, it, was, it wasn't, I didn't feel it beating at this point. I just knew my heart was, in a sense, alive. And I had the breath in my nostrils if you like but I didn't have nostrils so that was all there was of me and there was this peace and everything else right but you know I was me that is me and what I've learned since then is that the you know the the one love there is a one love and it made us and everything but it made us for a reason to so that we could experience as an entity so any of the one love that comes through me is slightly filtered by me will have a slightly different essence after it's been through me same if love comes from God you know it's the one love but it's come through God so it has that certain essence of God so, you know, you are a thing, you are, and that is, that is the amazing thing, you know, is you are real, you will continue after death, you do have eternal life, as you, not your physical body, not the egos you've created to defend yourself in this world, because the heart is very sensitive, but the true you. And yes, so if someone has had their own higher self speaking to them, they still possess the sort of, they're not sure they're not themselves fully, and so it feels to them like a different person is talking to them. Every now and then I get a sense of my full self, you know, the one that's lived all these previous lives going back four billion years and yes it is a a strong feeling you know it feels very strong but yeah <coughs> so sum up you are and what I was going to say about before when I had that meditation and I was just with my heart and the breath of my lungs, you know. At that point, I wasn't aware of how how I'm only half a... Well, I did know it intellectually, but I hadn't, I hadn't experienced enough of the other half of my soul being there. That's, that's the fact. The other half of your soul is always there with you on an emotional level in the emotional realm let's call it which is a different dimension it's the dominant dimension so it has height length and depth there's there's an emotional universe it's got so we're all we're all multi-dimensional. We can be here in the physical, we can be in the spiritual dream and the emotional, but the emotional is dominant over the other two.
And the language that we're going to be more and more using is emotional. It is far, far superior. And depending on words and things like that, you really need to get to know the other person. You need to know what they think of when you say a word. What, what does that bring to them? Whereas on an emotional level, you can just communicate. You know, and if you do the emotion, it kind of would feed through and show up as body language. You know, body language has a lot to say as well and comes straight from the heart. It's more difficult to fake. You can try, but I think it comes across if it's faked. Where if you're just being, then you're just being, aren't you? It's easy, simple, and that comes across. Eye contact. You can say a lot through eye contact. There's no... You're not necessarily well. You might be. You might, your eyebrows might be moving, but it's more like it's more like just a you know something in the back of the eyes. Well, it's coming from the head, and that you're saying something with your eyes. You know, it's coming from the back, but that that has to be person to person. I can't really do it to a video camera. I'm not really. Do you know what I mean? It's not a pair of eyes looking back at me in real time. Talking of eyes, <laughs> I can't get rid of the the cat's eye thing. The cats, the crocodiles, and I think the alligators and the gecko seems to be the only animals on the planet that have slit slitted pupils. There's some sort of weird llama or camel that has sideways, but slitted, and the, and the crocodiles and the cats have different type of eyelids. They have cover a covering that comes across, and then and then they can shut their eye. You know. So, if it was them evolving, then why only those two? They need to protect their eyes more than others, because with a slit pupil. And because I know with cats they have a covering which comes this way across the eye before they can kind of close their eyes. But they're not quite, you know, the outer covering of their eyes isn't such an eyelid. I'm not sure it is considered an eyelid. But the one that comes across, comes across, is it me in the middle? But I'm sure a cat could probably, maybe it's so they could sneak Sneak an eye open, half sleep with their eyes open. A, a crocodile, you know, why would they evolve slitted pupils and nothing else does? And why domestic cats got slitted pupils when none of the big cats have? That That is the thing that uh, suggests p p possible genetic manipulation. And I'm sure if you mixed a crocodile with a, a big cat, you wouldn't get a domestic cat. Now, if you could mix a gecko with a lion or something, maybe a domestic cat would come out. Would But the geckos have got a different eye, even though they have the slitted pupils, I think. They haven't got any eyelids at all. They just lick their eyes, something like that. And um, I don't know. but it doesn't appear that any. I might be wrong, but it doesn't appear that any other animals have slitted pupils. So, if the mix between crocodiles and lions, or geckos and lions, it's but it's possible. Or or was there some other being that had slitted pupils, maybe didn't originate on Earth, and did something, I don't know. See, I don't, 
my idea of space is is again like many things um not shared by anyone else you know but I'm, when i'm being specific it's 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 a bit like aj miller's it's like the the most a my idea of what's out in the universe and aj miller's idea of what's out in the universe is uh, actually pretty darn similar and um yeah i suppose suppose you know got it from him in a sense I mean, I when I started listening to him, I just believed everything he said because the first couple of things that he'd said hit me, bowl, and affected my life, and they I still stick with today and believe they're true. Basically, like God being our mother and father, and us having a soul and stuff like that, and a spirit body, and physical body. Yeah, definitely. And then he he never really mentioned anything. So obviously uh, there's things that he said which I no longer believe. Like he said, um, you know, this is our first life. Most of us, apart from him. <laughs> so, you know, I've gone away from that and I've gone away from a few other things he said. But anyway, it's not about him. So my idea of space, and and then he said there are six or seven other planets like Earth in the universe with life on them. And I agree. I, but I would say either 7 or 14 um, other planets in the entire universe. Which means there's loads and loads and loads without. Now some people say, oh, that's so, uh, you know, look all that universe, all that space out there. And, you know, you only think there's 7 or 14. So arrogant. It's not arrogant, really. The universe isn't that old. The Earth's only 4 billion years old. The universe is only about 15 billion years old. So there hasn't been that much time. I mean, if that's true, but it probably is, there hasn't been that much time for, you know, we came, took us 4 billion years to get this far, right? And who knows, you know, the universe maybe wasn't mature enough before to harbour that sort of life. Don't, you don't, we don't know. So... If there are about, you know, a dozen other planets out there, but what that means is this, we've got all this room to explore. We are, we are in the very early stages of our eternal life, if it is fully eternal. Um, you know, <clears throat> someone said, um, "Free your mind." YouTube channel, Zach. He was, we were having a little chat and he said um, something about, you know, this thing about, you know, when you, uh, when you find an answer to a question, there are just more questions. And I sort of had a little go saying, don't say that, you know, it's defeatist. <laughs> but, and then he said, you know, but yeah, you know, it's, it's true, it's just kind of change in a different form. And I said, yeah, better form, right? And that's true. And I suppose it's something I'd been avoiding a bit, how I'd sought for all these answers, and I felt like I'd got them. And I certainly do. But I still had questions remaining, which I admitted, which I couldn't explain, you know, when did this all begin? Like, if God has a father and so on and so on and so on, when did it start? And... You know, if we're going to live for eternity, eternity, you know, is it truly eternity? Um, and are, are, are there, an, as, as the one love made an eternal number of souls, well, could it truly be eternal? Or would there be some sort of finite figure? Well, so anyway, I think what you've got to understand is, you know, you, we, we are here at a certain level of understanding. And I certainly satisfied my curiosity for what I feel like I need to know now. And that includes what possibly I'm going to be doing for the next several thousand years. Maybe even millions of years. Maybe even some sort of inkling into the billions of years. But after that, I can wait. Right? <laughs> so, yes... There are going to be more questions. 
but you must find answers and the answers are there to be found and every time you do find an answer it's awesome you do find yourself in a better place although sometimes the pill is a little bitter for a while it means you may have to make some adjustments but for the long term you're in a better place Right, <laughs> we were talking about cats with slitted eyes. There's something about it. I, I, you know, I was going to look at a video about the DNA of domestic animals, and specifically domestic cats. I think that'd be interesting, but I haven't, I haven't looked yet, so I don't know if there is anything. So um, I wrote a song, first one in a number of years, and it's pretty good. I might play it at the end, a live rendition. Um, so the Nostradamus thing is, is going to be a while, uh, I think, before I get anything like results. There's quite a bit of work to do. I think I need to, like it's not, so like the patterns of rhymes that I've found, you know, I've probably, may have done a couple of hundred. So there's a thousand to do. If I've done as many as a couple of hundred, I'm not sure, but. Um, what's interesting, obviously you find, so, so you're saying that they're in order of prose, rhyme um, but let's say a word like the Pyrenees okay so in the French because I'm obviously I'm doing it in the French uh, so that ends with things so you have so in the Pyrenees in that the one that ends with the rhyme that Pyrenees does but also other words do as well they say there's 15 and three or four of them mention the Pyrenees so that was a little bit off putting. I thought, hmm, like, uh, you know, does this mean this whole, this, they are not going to link together. This is, this is not right. Um, but then I thought, you know, if, if he didn't want it to go in with this particular one, he could put it on the rhyming of one and three, and he wouldn't necessarily have to end the word with the Pyrenees unless he wanted to. And he could even end the word with Pyrenees, even if it wasn't that relevant, just to to get it in the rhyme. So, but they so they're not jumping out and making complete sense. But they do seem more like as you read them in a row, like in rhyme, they do seem to be a bit more cohesive. But certainly, nothing sort of there's 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 a couple that have come out to me to show me that um, you know certain dates but very sort of odd here and there nothing completely linking up yet so that's why I'm thinking I probably probably need to do the whole lot and I don't know they might end up making one long consecu consecutive line I don't know we'll wait and see so that's that's certainly uh, work Work in progress. Yeah, what's the rush, hey? No bloody rush. We've got, we've got a good few years when we're going to be not seeing much, which a lot of people will disagree with. Well, I'm finding myself in disagreement with quite a lot of people at the moment. Not unusual. Um. We will see, won't we? You know, it, if I'm right about this 19-year wave thing, I need, I need some recognition. Not that I want the recognition. I just I feel like we ought to know the truth. My nails are a bit long. Let's go. Is it true? <coughs> 
<coughs> I might not remember the words. Cast into a world of bright blurry colours, delightful squeals, coos and soft cover. Strapped into car seats, high seats, and his TV. Off to school now, read and write, learn the world is history. I was dead inside by the time I was 15. I fought back and nearly lived, but I couldn't decide. Until we really need Don't ever believe it Until we really need it They all get wise as tomorrow's become today They say they know but questions aren't we answers to understand You must know what you know All answers are within but that